Process flowcharts are used often in Lean Six Sigma. It's important for us to know these. They show us the sequence of process steps. Now, before we jump in, let me mention that if you're interested in a free white belt certification course, you can access one at sixsigmasociety.org. All right, now let's talk about process flowcharts. To improve a process, we first have to understand it. We have to capture it in the as-is state. And process mapping is a key first step to understanding our process. We have to know what steps are performed. So here are some of the common symbols we could use on our process map. We could use a square or a rectangle to represent an activity, like picking an order, packing an order, shipping an order, so on. And a diamond is going to represent a decision. And those decisions are going to have yes and no outputs. There's two paths out of them. And then we're going to use an ellipse to represent a start and an end point. And then we're going to use an arrow to represent directional flow. So those four symbols on the left are going to be the most common that we're going to use on a process map. And the symbols on the right are still used, just probably not as often. Now the symbol in the, in the top right is a predefined process. So let's say we draw out our process map and we have a sub-process that's, that's been included or maybe a series of steps that we uh, may not fit on the diagram or may not make sense to include. It's a process that's, that's defined somewhere else, a predefined process or a sub-process. And the funny looking symbol right below that is a document. We could show that when a document gets created in a process or updated perhaps. A circle could represent an on-page connector. So if um, we don't want to have you know, lines crossing all throughout our process flow, we could use connectors to connect different points of the diagram. And then we could also use the symbol at the bottom to represent an off-page connector. So if we want to connect two process maps, maybe on different pages, we could use that off-page connector to do so. Now here's a simple example of a shipment process, a high-level shipment process. Okay, so we start the process, and then we pick the order. And then after we pick the order, we check to see if it's correct. If it's not correct, we have to go and repick it, correct the issue. If it is correct, we move forward, we pack that order, we send it to the carrier, and then we deliver it. And then it ends at that point. Now, this high-level process flow is sometimes called a macro process map or a management view. Now, as you create a process flow, you can go into varying levels of detail. And as, as an example, you could take the uh, picking the order step and probably split it out even further. But you may not need to do so. It kind of depends on who your audience is, who you're communicating this process flow to. Now, what you don't see in this particular view is who does what. And that's where a swim lane, a, another version of this process flow diagram, diagram comes in handy. And so what you're going to see on the left-hand side in this case are different groups or parties involved in the process. So the top swim lane represents the warehouse activities they perform, and the bottom lane represents the carrier activities that the carrier performs, like UPS or FedEx. And so when the process starts, the warehouse picks the order and checks to make sure it's accurate. And then they're going to pack the order and send it to the carrier. And then the carrier, like UPS, FedEx, or someone else is going to deliver it, and then the process would end at that point. These swim lanes are really useful to represent who does what. It can be easily seen in the view. Now, as a note here, oftentimes these process flow diagrams are not enough information to train someone on the process. There's more detail needed behind that. And so oftentimes you'll take a process flow diagram and put it into what's called a standard operating procedure which provides you more information about the background of the process, uh, why it's needed, and then specific or more detailed steps, uh, references to other documentation or templates that are needed, that can be included in the standard operating procedure. Those two things can go together. So thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more, don't forget to check out the free Lean Six Sigma certification course at sixsigmasociety.org.